tell the history of an industry by looking at something that it produced. Uh, Tretica started in the 1830s and really Tretica is the name that was taken from Wales. Tretica pretty much is a reproduction of the way England made our <laughs> Civil War. The reason why the Confederate capital moved from Montgomery to Richmond was the location of the Tretica Iron Works. The Tretica Iron Works was the largest iron works in the South and one of the largest in the United States. And because of its size, it was felt very important to have the Confederate capital close to Tretica. If it had been the other way, if there had been no Tretica Iron Works here, Richmond probably would not have been the capital of the Confederacy, and the fighting that became the Civil War might have taken a, an entirely different turn. Canals like the one we're standing over right now were very commonplace all throughout Richmond. These canals were a mass transit highway for transportations and supplies and materials needed at Tretica. As you can see by Tredegar's location, it was an optimal place for easy access to the canal, the railroad, and the river itself. Supplies could come in from the west, from the east, and from the south. This canal is similar to what was behind Tredegar during the Civil War era in Richmond. It would be located uphill, therefore gravity would enable the water to pick up momentum and speed to go down those raceways that we talked about and power Tredegar. All right, class, 150 years ago, Harvey's Pond, which is a turning basin in the canal, the power Tredegar, was right behind this floodgate. It would open up and water would come rushing down, tons and tons of it, and that would be the life source and the power for Tredegar. Now, I'm going to run and show you the route in which the water took, all right? Fun. This wheel is massive, as you can see by my wingspan. How efficiently the Tredegar managers handled operations. The skill of Anderson and others that ran Tredegar was second to none. These men were very talented. They looked after their employees because they knew their employees were extremely valuable. Slaves that worked at Tredica were treat, treated virtually as free people. They could roam around Richmond, they could do pretty much anything they wanted because they had acquired a unique skill in iron making that was very hard to copy and very hard to learn. <laughs> The first step of the process was creating a mold for the cannon. The second step was lowering that mold under the earth and covering it with sand. The third step was attaching a trough to that mold. Now we need to take you outside of the furnace. Right, inside this area right here, this is where workers were able to put wood and coal to burn and uh, produce heat. The heat would then follow the contour of this furnace all the way down here. Up here, this is where the workers would lift the grates up, dump the solid iron into, and heat it up into melt. The impurities would empty out the slag hole right here, and on the opposite side of this would be liquid iron, which would go through a tap hole, follow the channel inside the uh, factory. On the opposite side of the furnace, as you can see here, was the tap hole. This was opposite of the slag hole, 
and once they opened this up, it allowed the molten iron to pour through the furnace into the factory for the casting process. The tadpole would open up and liquid iron would come down the trough and fill up the mold, which would already be placed in the ground. The mold would be filled and left to dry for several days. After it had dried, it would be lifted out of the ground and ready to bore. That giant wheel would move these drive shafts, which were metal poles along the roof of Tredegar, or along the ceiling on the inside, and that would turn big leather belts. The leather belts would be attached to these, and these are different speeds. And a tool like this would turn these cranks and power a boring bit, which would lay the hole inside a cannon, which was the nozzle. These clamps would hold down that huge iron cannon. This is one of the many tools that that drive shaft hooked up to the big powerful wheel, hooked up to the raceways would power. Kaizen and the Civil War? Exactly, Michael. Kaizen and the Civil War just means they were always trying to improve their operations. The military's been doing this for years. They're trying to make weapons that are more deadly at a faster rate. The cannon you saw up front, the barrel was rifled. This was discovered to make the cannon projectile go much further, miles in fact, than a regular cannon. It would put a spin on it like a spiral on a football. They discovered these techniques and many other techniques at Browns Island right across the canal from Tredegar. This was a laboratory for trying to construct new weapons of mass destruction to wreak havoc on the Union. Operations were also improved by materials. Cheaper materials that could be molded easier and arrive faster were also discovered and started to be put in use. This meant less waiting time for materials to get here, and you could produce more materials faster. And one of the main downfalls of the South was when, when the Union cut off their supplies. And when your supplies are cut off, any corporation knows that you can't continue operations. Now, if you look at this railroad track, you'll notice that this side is totally worn off. It should look like this side, but it doesn't. The reason for this is it was used so much that it eventually wore away. And one of the reasons why the South lost the Civil War was it had a problem in transportation or in logistics. There was plenty of food for Robert E. Lee's army at Appomattox. They simply did not have a way to get it. So when you see a piece of railroad track that is worn off like this, that track should not have been used. Now there's But Tretica was more than a ironworks. It basically had its own army. And in 1864, Colonel Dahlgren of the Union Army tried to raid Richmond by coming down River Road, and his plan was to cross the James River up near Goochland Henrico Line, come down the south side of Richmond, and then across the James where the state capital is, and theoretically shoot Jefferson Davis and the Confederate leadership. Unfortunately for Dahlgren's plan, men from Tretica, along with the Home Guard, met Dahlgren and his men at what is now the Country Club of Virginia. If you go to the intersection of Three Chop Road and Carey Street Road, there's a marker there. The men at Tretica probably saved Richmond in addition to building uh, ships, cannons, and railroads. Tretica survived the war. It was not destroyed by the Union Army. It continued to make munitions and other armaments into World War I and even into World War II when eventually a fire put an end to it.